Okay, so let's look at <clears throat> the paranasal sinuses. So sinuses are basically like gaps in your skull. So we saw there's a video posted on Blackboard. I encourage you guys to watch that video on the um, uh, sinus in the skull. And you can actually see that there are holes or gaps in the skull. And um, those holes or those gaps are known as sinuses. And the reason why we have those air spaces in our skull is because um, they try to lighten the weight of the skull or the weight of your head. And so to do that, if they have spaces in your head, it lightens the weight of the skull. We're actually going to look into, into that um, in another slide. But the reason why we have sinuses is, actually I have it here. Let me just pull it up so that we can look at that. Is that sinuses lighten the weight of the bone in the head and face. So our head doesn't feel as heavy because we have sinuses. So that's why um, sinuses are there, to lighten the weight of the bone in the head and face. So frontal sinus, ethmoid sinus, spinoid sinus is further deeper in, which we'll show, I'll show you in a different picture. And then we have the maxillary sinus, which is near the maxillary bone. Okay, so here's the spinoid sinus. And if you look at the spinoid sinus, do you see how much further deeper rather it is in the um, head? And you can see it's a faded blue over here. You can see it more over here. So if I look at it in the skull, this is your frontal bone. This is your occipital bone at the back over here. This over here is known as your uh, pituitary fossa, which we'll look at later on. But basically, the spinoid sinus is located somewhere here. So you can see it's further down, right? So here's your front of the head. Spinoid is further down inside your skull or inside your head. And so if you get an infection here, if you get mucus buildup over here, you're going to feel congestion deep in the midline of the head. So you're going to feel congestion way inside uh, your head. We also have ethmoid air cells or ethmoid sinus, and it kind of looks like air sacs or air cells like that. And so the front ones or the one closer to the front are known as anterior air cells, and the ones in the back are known as posterior air cells air cells, so anterior air cells, posterior ethmoid air cells. You can see here, this is what I mean by mucus. You see how there's mucus over here? So this is healthy where there's nothing inside, and this is inflamed, and you can see mucus building up inside the sinuses, which is not fun. Here is um, a good way to remember your paranasal sinuses. Just remember FEMS, so F for frontal, E for ethmoid, M for maxillary sinus, and S for spinoid sinus. So this is a good trick to remember the types of sinuses, or paranasal sinuses that we have. So here we're going to look at the drainage, and this is the important part. So if we look at the frontal sinus, okay, which is in the front, where the frontal bone is, do you see this tube over here? This is actually a duct. And this duct, so if there's any mucus here, it has to come out somehow. So it comes out through this uh, frontal nasal duct, is that it comes out through the stuck, and where is it draining? Where does it come out from? It comes out from the middle meatus. So superior is over here, superior meatus, middle meatus, inferior meatus. Remember, meatus is just like a space where uh, the drainage can come out from. So it's a space. Okay, so where does the frontal sinus drain? It drains into the middle meatus. Let's look at the spinoid sinus. So the spinoid sinus is over here, and you can see this duct, right? And so anytime there's this uh, mucus in the spinoid sinus, it needs to come out somehow, right? So it gets drained. And here's the duct, and it comes out. And this area over here, just where it comes out, is known as the spinoethmoidal recess. It's just this area over here. So the spinoethmoidal recess is right over here. And that's where it comes out. So all the mucus comes out over here. And where does it go? It then comes out of the superior nasal meatus. So the superior meatus is where all the mucus will eventually come out, and it can go to the back of your throat, or it can go to the front of your nose. Okay, so frontal sinus, where does it come out from? The middle, because this is the middle, the middle meatus. Spinoid sinus, where does the mucus come out from or drain from? It comes out into the spinoethmoidal spino recess, which is this area, and then it eventually comes out to the superior nasal meatus, okay, superior nasal meatus. You'll also notice over here 
that there is also ethmoidal cells. So posterior ethmoidal cells trains in here too. So let's look at that. Remember when we looked at ethmoidal cells, we said that this is the anterior, this is the posterior. So the posterior ethmoidal cell comes out from this area over here, from the superior nasal meatus. We also have the anterior ethmoidal cell, so anterior because it's towards the front, posterior because it's towards the back of the head. So posterior comes out on this side, which is the superior nasal meatus. The anterior ethmoidal cells comes out from the middle meatus. Okay, does that kind of make sense? So if you have ethmoidal air cells and it's from the back, posterior ethmoid, ethmoidal cells, that comes out from the superior meatus. But if you have ones that are in the front, anterior ethmoidal cells, then that comes out from the middle. This is the superior, this is the middle, this is the inferior. So this over here is saying that the anterior ethmoidal cells comes out from the middle meatus. The frontal sinus also comes out from the middle meatus. Okay. And then we're going to look at the, um, actually we'll do one more, and the maxillary sinus, so the maxillary sinus is right over here, when these have filled up with mucus, they have to drain somewhere too. Where do they drain? They also drain in the area of the middle meatus. So they also come up from the middle meatus. So maxillary sinus, they, there's a drain or a duct that leaks or drops all the mucus here and then it comes out. The last one is the inferior nasal concave and the inferior nasal concave or sorry, inferior nasal meatus, I should say, concave is the bone, meatus is that space, and that meatus is the opening of the nasal lacrimal duct. So lacrimal stands for like a tear, right? Tear duct. So where you, where you, when you cry and you have buildup of mucus and, you know, tears there, it costs you this is, it comes out from the inferior meatus. So let's recap everything all together. What comes out from the superior meatus? Superior meatus releases the mucus from the sphenoid sinus and from the posterior ethmoidal sinus. What drains into the middle meatus? So the middle meatus looks at um, the mucus from the frontal sinus, so that comes out here. It mucus from the middle ethmoidal cell also comes out here, and the anterior ethmoidal cells also come out over here. So remember when we look at the ethmoidal cells, this is the anterior. This is the posterior, there's also the middle. So the middle and the anterior ethmoidal um, sinus comes out or joins into rather the middle meatus. Posterior joins into the superior meatus. And then we're going to look at maxillary sinus that also joins from this area, the middle meatus. And lastly, when we look at the inferior meatus, there's only one thing that joins out from that, and that is the nasolacrimal duct, which is like a tear duct that comes out from there. So it's important to know what comes out from the superior, what comes out from the middle, and what comes out from the inferior meatus. And here's another picture explaining just that. Okay, so here's a maxillary sinus, which is the largest sinus of um, all. And you can see it's right on top of your molar teeth. And it, when you're born, it's like a pea size and it kind of expands as you grow. So if you look at it from a radiograph, what you'll notice is this black thing over here is your sinus. And you can see here how the sinus, it's so close to the roots of the maxillary teeth, right? And so the reason why that is important is if your sinus is really close to your teeth, um, sometimes you'll have patients come in and they'll be like, um, I think my I have a cavity or my teeth are really hurting. And when you take an x-ray and you see that there's no cavities and everything looks perfect, but you see the sinus dipping lower, that's when you can ask, the, you can tell the client that, you know what, maybe it's not a cavity, but maybe it's your sinus that's really bothering you. Because when the sinus touches the tooth, we just, we, the brain may incorrectly interpret it as pain coming from the tooth, but really it's not pain from the tooth actually pain from your sinus infection. So they probably need to go see a doctor and get medication to help with their sinus infection. And anytime a dentist has to extract a teeth and if it's so close to the sinus, they have to be really, really careful because um, a portion of the sinus um, may, be, may be taken out as well. So it's really important 
um, that the sinus is uh, not extracted. It's just a tooth that's extracted. So the, the dentists have to be mindful of the sinus location when they're extracting the maxillary teeth. All right, thanks for listening.